welcome back to Air Engine Research. Uh, I recently got a request from a new subscriber. If I could please uh, show the calculations of compressed air, how to select the tank size based on the engine and other parameters, and also could I please provide material regarding modifications of a four-stroke engine to compressed air engine. Well, I will try to do that. I have got a couple of uh, sheets to look at and a spreadsheet that I want to show you, and I've put some information together, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, I just showed a little design of the, uh, the piston and what it does going through the the complete revolution from the top down to the bottom and then back up to the top. Uh, the piston surface area is a, a formula that you use is 3.14 times the radius squared <clears throat> which gives you like 1.75 which is the radius times 3.14 that gives you 960 9.62 square inches. So the volume of air needed to push the piston from the top all the way to the bottom is 9.62 times 3.81 which is the stroke <clears throat> and that will give you 36.64 cubic inches for one, one piston to go down to the bottom. So using four cylinders of a, of a gas engine, it would take 146.55 cubic inches of compressed air to turn one revolution of the crankshaft. Now I have a five-speed four-cylinder pickup and running in fifth gear at 2,000 RPMs. I can go one mile in a minute or it's going 60 miles an hour. So in a minute if we go look at a spreadsheet, it takes an enormous amount of air to pressurize and run a system like that. So looking at the spreadsheet, uh, up at the top you see the, the pressure that I've indicated here is running at 125 PSI <clears throat> and the engine will be running at 2,000 RPMs and the engine running to the tire ratio is 3.6 revolutions of the engine to one tire turn and if you go down a little all the way down to the bottom tire size is a two foot tire and <clears throat> the circumference is 6.28 feet and 5,280 feet per mile if you divide that by the tire it gives you 840 revolutions per mile and based on the amount of air that a four cylinder would use you look up over to the right up kind of at the top of that lower section 146 cubic inches now the tank that I based this on is a, a 12 inch radius or a two foot diameter and four foot long and if you could get 1500 psi in it the volume of air at 1500 PSI is 21,703 cubic inches. Now if you convert that into 125 PSI, that gives you 238,740 cubic inches at 125 PSI. Now that amount of air would allow you to go about a 
quarter of a mile. So it's not very practical to try to use a, an existing gasoline motor. <clears throat> now, if we look at the difficulty we're facing, in order to get a, a, a good sized air tank that can hold very high pressure safely, it would have to be a carbon fiber tank. And the problem there is that it costs about $6,000. And then also, we've got a problem with how do we get that tank pressurized up to, say, 1,500 or 2,000 or 5,000 PSI. That requires a three-stage air compressor. And to get one that would uh, give you the volume that you need, and also up to that pressure, it's around twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. <throat> so, looking at the calculation spreadsheet, I'm planning on a much lower pressure and just going like local distances. So, so at 1500 psi, if you look at that middle section, I can get around 10 to 11 miles on a 1500 psi tank. Now also these calculations are based on running continuously at 125. Now there will be a lot of times when you on a flat you may not need 125. Going up a hill you may have to up that pressure. Going down the hill you'd be running zero pressure. So it can kind of change its uh, the distance by you know how the area that you live in. If you live somewhere where it's flat you can go a lot further than somebody who lives in a hilly country. Uh, but overall my view is that converting a gasoline motor or a diesel motor into a, a compressed air vehicle is just not anything that is practical. Uh, even a, a rotary engine or any kind of an engine that has a crankshaft, it takes an enormous amount more than what the eccentric motor that, that I've come up with. You only have to go halfway to make one revolution of the motor instead of going all the way from top to bottom. I only go halfway and it's a smaller cylinder and based on running at a, a 2000 RPM, the, the more RPMs you, you run, the more power it's got based on you know, the size of the motor, so that's where I'm going. But anyway, I hope this has given you some information about just uh, what kind of thing you're going to be looking at. So, until next time, I hope you'll enjoy seeing what I've put out. So, until next time, goodbye.